culture is a living organism, then culture can be spoken into. It's comprised of all the lives, our lives. We're in a tricky and dangerous place. We're so busy living in the fast forward that most people barely have time to show up for their own lives. We all are searching for beauty. It's the Imago Dei, the, the spark of God within us. We are in that journey of the soul of moving toward that which is beautiful. There's never a time that I hold a score of Bach and conduct that my hands don't tremble, that I can take a, an inspired creation 300 years old and recreate it in the moment through gifts that God has given me. To me, beauty is its intimacy. It's intimacy of relationship that is beyond goodness. And intimacy of truth is an intimacy that is deep within. But that's so abstract that, that for me, it still has to come back to faith and to the source of beauty. But that's part of the calling, isn't it? I never became an artist to convince people of my God through my art. That wasn't what it was about. What is, what is beauty? What is faith? What is art? What, what makes us truly human? I think those Questions are best asked with art. Paul Clay, in The Inward Vision, said that art does not reproduce the visible, it makes visible the invisible. Contemporary expression in general lost sight of transcendence. We have been deprived of um, the breadth and depth of what the imagination can bring. When I saw American Beauty for the first time, um, you know, there's there's a line that one of the characters says that says there's so much beauty in the world. Sometimes my heart just wants to break, you know, there's, I just can't take it, there's so much beauty, and I think a lot of people in my generation feel that way, you know, there's so much beauty that's in the world, but it's so hard to, you know, capture that when you're so mediated and you're so bombarded by, you know, things from every direction, and there's a lot more that's going on in entertainment that's changing our culture in ways that are damaging, and, you know, if we don't pay attention to that, then what's going to happen to us? We, we are cut off. In, in our culture, that we've got these little minds that work and we're just completely disconnected from this. And I think we have our Enlightenment Fathers to thank for that in many ways, but um, there's no integration. One of the frustrations of this younger generation is that there are things that were passed on to my generation that we should have passed on to them. 
and that we didn't. Things about what is true, what is good, what is beautiful, what has worth, what has value. And it's very difficult for a boomer to speak with authority to their kids because most boomers feel like hypocrites. Well, we're a culture at risk and no one can quite get a fix on how great the risks are. I think Solzhenitsyn was the first to boldly bring it to people's attention in the United States when he gave the commencement address at Harvard University. And he looked at the United States and the situation we're in as being evidence of the death of the West, that we've really lost our soul, we've lost our, our center, our sense of purpose, that we've really gotten so much that we, we're really choking on the materialism that's a product of the fruitfulness of an earlier age. It makes you wonder if people have lost the curiosity or the will to discover or see life as a great adventure. If they wouldn't rather simply have someone tell them how it is, dictate style and dictate thinking and dictate behavior and dictate politics to them. Uh, I wonder about that because it doesn't seem like people want to engage in debate as much as they simply want to be distracted. We are distracted. But if there's something to it, if there's something to the good, the true, and the beautiful, then it's an adventure. And life affords us the ability to think and inquire and ask questions and wonder about it all. I'm so excited about working in this time and in this, in this period simply because I know that this culture is not set in stone. And it's spoken into with our experiences, with our lives, with our dreams, with our hurts, with our pains. And all this creates this rich, fertile ground. This is, this is the locus out of which we create. And he is at the center. For a long time, I thought that success as an artist meant that wonderful review. Getting the, the painting in the museum on the Upper East Side. Selling the painting for big bucks. And I realize now that even though those things may happen, they're really the sideshows in the circus. They may happen on the end of the stick, they may not. Success to me now is being faithful to pursue what you know God has called you to do. Success is being faithful to do what you know your very molecules have been aligned to do. What was I thinking? They'd fall on their knees and tell me they're so glad I sang that song, and they'd drop everything and listen over and over again. And then later in the song it says, well, maybe I've learned something now. And I have learned something. I've learned that better to reach a few with significant depth than millions in a shallow way. 
Uh, that's been a huge lesson for me. Everything we do as writers, as filmmakers and so on, is actually based on a simple principle, which is that our whole exploration, our whole goal is to find out what it means to be truly human. A good tree will bear good fruit. So don't worry about the fruit of this story. Don't worry about anything like that. Just trust yourself and that when you link with this place of passion with this story, good fruit will come out of it. It'll come out of it by you trusting that if you're called to go on this journey, good fruit will come out of that. But you won't cheat on the darkness. You won't cheat on the darkness. You, you, you'll just do the story. You won't cheat on anything. And out of this will come light. Out of this darkness will come light. But not by you imposing the light on it. Quite the opposite. By you actually exploring the human heart. If we make art, theater for instance, where every character is converted before the curtain falls, that's lying. But if we say that there is no God, only despair and emptiness, nothing more, only an extension of our own creations, then that's lying too. Some people have asked me, um, is your art true? I like to think that my art is true when I'm being true to my worldview. And my worldview is that there is no ceiling to this world in which we live. So I think we need to ask the big questions. And not because we need to look for answers. Life is not about answers. It's about the next question and the next question. And those are what the good films are. And cinema is the only place left that a generation of filmmakers and film viewers are willing to look through the screen of the cinema to further up, further in questions. Is there any more? And I suppose the question behind the question, behind the question is, What's my identity? Is my identity in the film I've just made? Is my identity in my job? Because when I haven't got a job, who am I? Cogitate, ergo, use my head. What is this odd emotion that I dread? I go to an audition. Uh, I used to. I would go in and with these people behind the table, I would um, give them this almighty power to bestow on me this being that I felt like I lacked, this, this, uh, this right to be there. I believe that our desire is to be, is to be one whole incorporated being that, that, is, that is of substance. But yet we place value on um, we place value on what you do, and not even value, maybe a price. I find when I tell people I'm an actor, they ask, you know, well, are you really an actor, or you do do you wait tables? And that doesn't change the fact that I'm an actor. I am an actor. But I think that the fullness of our being can come when our focus is on him because I think so much of us just get imploded and look right in here and what are you gonna find in there? I've looked around in there a lot and I've just found darkness and confusion. He's this power source for your creativity and that's what I'm trying to do in Culture Shock. I'm trying to do that in a way that it promotes hip-hop culture as positive, as life-changing, you know, like, and not something negative, not something that's gonna like tear people down or be about, oh it's me, 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 you know, like whatever. You know, that's not it's me, whatever, you know, if, if I wasn't in a context of a broader community and my spiritual reality, my, you know, God, it's pointless. It doesn't matter, you know. I mean, I, you know, try to get famous, some other guy's just going to get more famous than you. If you wrestle with the deepest part of our humanity, including darkness, 
you are wrestling with a reality that God has created. I was walking through Brooklyn one time, and this man, he walked by me, and I was getting out of his way, and he was like, get out of my way. I mean, but it was like, I felt like a dart go right into my stomach. It was like the hate and the bitterness that came from this man. Well, it, was, it just hit me, and I, and I know everybody's experienced that. I know everyone has had that experience of just being hit in the gut. And it just enraged me. For four blocks, I was just like, God, you know, I was so mad. And, and I realized that if that little dart of hate upset me so much, what was it like for Jesus to take the entire weight of sin and darkness and evil into his own body on the cross? And I just, and, and that includes mine. That includes the people that I've hurt and that I've talked poorly about behind their back or to their face. The people I've stolen from, the people that I have disrespected, um, the people that I've lied about. He took that all for me. Living in New York, being an actor, there are lessons all over the place. He came to limit himself to our reality so that we can take what's ordinary and we can um, be amazed by it. Little things in life, like William Blake said, finding this uh, the entire universe in a grain of sand to help us say, no, 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 this, this is not just about you. universe <laughs> so don't be afraid afraid to experience joy but to give glory to the creator who gave you these things I think that's everything knowing that he's got your best beyond your best interest at heart and he longs to pour nothing but goodness and wonderful wonderful things into your life he has an infinite capacity to give. We have an infinite capacity to receive. Sometimes we think of calling uh, to ministry as a clergy or something, but, but, but calling is deeper than that. We each have a calling. Uh, that calling is related to gifts. We each have gifts. But it, it, it goes back to that idea of searching, that idea that we are longing for that connector of beauty, that art is only a conduit. But it's not beauty for beauty's sake or art for art's sake. It, it, it's more of a question of where does this beauty lead? Culture is us. And I believe that we as artists have an opportunity to speak into our culture, not to use art in any abusive way, but to speak into our culture and to say our lives make a difference. My students' lives make a difference and my students are hungry to hear that. The work they make will shape the world, their children and their grandchildren will grow up in. And I asked them this, what kind of world do you want to create for them? At the end, when all is said and done, I stand with C.S. Lewis when he said, we pick a bouquet and we bring it back to the gardener.